As the saying goes, you can't polish a turd. But you can roll it in glitter. I'm using a raised panel bit, because hashtag rolling in glitter. It didn't turn out too bad, considering what the medium is, OSB, really. A quick little buzz for the saw, just to accept those raised panels, rear panels, they are going to be at the rear. And then quickly throw in some dominoes. I don't know what they used to put this together, the, the uh, OSB. Because if you drop some water on it, it beads up like a damn good wax on a car. So um, I wasn't taking any chances of any normal PVA going to, you know, work or even hold. So I'm using PU glue for this. I'm hoping that will uh, hold. I just saw that clip and I thought it was funny and it kind of works with what we're going to be getting into here. Like with most things I make, I usually go with templates like this. It's much easier to take your measurements from. You can easily lay your workpiece down on it and go, yep, that's exactly the right measurement and work from that. Or if you're going to use a router bit, like a, a template, like a pattern bit, or etc. This works well for. I often hear in woodworking groups, what angle should I make the legs of this chair at? What angles should I make the legs of this stool at? What splay? Whatever. Who gives a shit? Don't, don't waste your time thinking about it. Just go with what you feel is right. I mean, when it comes to dovetails, I don't give a toss about the ratio either. I mean, if you're going to do a one-to-one -one ratio, expect that to be a crap joint. And the similar applies with with the legs I'm doing here. I'm not really caring about what angle. I mean, there's somewhere between 15 and 20 degrees. I don't know. I don't really care. I'm just laying down my lines until I see something visually I like. And I know that's going to work because simply the joinery is going to fit and everything will work out nice. There's a lot of to and fro when it comes to marking this out and drawing it out because you want the width here a bit fatter or want the curves here a bit different. You might want a straight edge on the inside. Just play with it, man. Just draw till you see something you think, yeah, that works. And you can spend a good hour on this and think, oh, that's too thin, that's too thick. Just keep going till you see something you like, man. Don't get bogged down with rules. You know, rules are there to be made. You just break the damn things, eh? Let's just find out what works and what doesn't. And woodworking's not, how do I say it? It's not surgery. Some people like to make it out to be, but it's not. You can use French curves, bendy rulers, bits of string, other templates you've made previously to get these curves. And I can draw, I was born artistically minded, and I can paint, so I've got no quarrels doing this freehand. Sometimes I like to pull out the French curves, but seldom do.
you're done, draw in some cut lines. Now, remember, you're going to probably have a... You're going to have the curve for your saw to deal with, which in this case is like 2.2 mil, I think, which is going to change that shape a little bit. So when it comes to shaping later, remember... thing I should say about sanding a template or shaping a template you need to keep what you're sanding at a right angle to the face of the template for obvious reasons especially if you're using a, 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 a router cutter a template bit with all those templates shaped such a just Draw them onto some oak or whatever your chosen wood is. Bandsaw it out. Here's a little jig I made for cutting silly angles that you can't normally cut, even though that saw can do 60 degrees. I'm not going to do it safely. And uh, this was a major help to keep some nice straight sides. For the base of the legs, I've taken the angle from the drawing although this does go wrong I don't, I, I don't know why but do a test cut on a piece of wood check it with your angle and uh, if that suits works then take your uh, good piece to it and cut your angle I'm going to use domino joinery here because it's just quicker if you've got it use it man two different types I'm going to use the I think the 14 domino there I'm going to have to cut that short though because it's too long and the safest way of doing that is a little backboard there don't raise the saw till it's stopped I love those pop-up dogs I mean they're there they're gone brilliant especially if you're doing something like that with a domino I need to put some more on the bench. Just can't be asked. So, so here's uh, for all you polyurethane haters, some PVA, some gratuitous PVA glue up. It's 10 degrees in the shop. It ain't shitty uh, OSB. So that's what I'm using. And do you remember those bits I cut off the sides before? No, they make nice clamping calls, so don't throw those away. I really love this rasp, if you could call it a rasp. It's more like a shitload of saws kind of glued together. But boy, does it shift material fast. It's pretty clean too, but mine's had a hammering. I mean, it looks like a banana now, but I love it. I just wish someone would make a, you know, a half round version of it if you could. I'd be well happy with that, because that's the rasp I use the most. I'm not worried about blow out here, tear out from, from the rasp. It's going to be fine considering what I'm going to do with it later on. I don't know what kind of woodworking move this is, but it looks like spank, spank, spank. Now this is kind of funny, to be honest with you, considering a lot of my tools are festal. The old, what is there, strap line? Work smarter, not harder. 
Well, I think I'm on my second pair of legs here. No, this is the first pair, but the second of first pair, if you know what I mean. Anyway, I'm marking out my the belly I can see that I need to rasp out. And I don't know why, but then it occurred to me. Splendid girl. It's easy to get carried away with hand tools. You can just forget what you're doing. You can forget depression. You can forget everything going on in the world because you have to concentrate on everything you're doing. It's more fun. Power tools get you there. But hand tools, finesse. I love end grain and I don't know why people want to hide it with breadboard ends. I mean, most people say, yeah, it helps keep the table flat, but not really. Now this little trick will help you sand with the face grain round to the end grain, you, you, you'll lose that shadow. That's the kind of shadow line I was showing you earlier. And it will look beautiful, just like wood does. Over bit I used didn't quite cut the mustard, so I'm drawing some craft, crafting lines on there and um, rounding it over to something I feel I like, you know, so it looks better, not so abrupt where the, the where the lines meet. hate relationship with making my own dowels even if I pick the straightest grain in the world I still can't get perfect dowels but I'm a perfectionist so I'm never going to be happy anyway but I find turning the plate like this really helps get a decent dowel and I chose Wenge here because it's going to look black when the finish hits it which will match the uh, dark grey of the paint I do love a nice, fresh, clean brad point drill bit. It's going to make a nice, clean hole for my dowel to go into. But you can't complain about that. That is nice. Whoa. I did pre-finish pre these legs uh, for obvious reasons. They're going to be going up against the cabinet. And I'm still using PU glue because they're going into the cabinet. Not my first choice of uh, polyurethane glue but hey that's what I've got so I'm using it now I spent a good few evenings wondering how I could attach these legs without having to use any iron mongery screws ever I don't like I don't like to try and keep the metal out but I couldn't really think of a better idea so uh, hence the dowels cover the screws and make it work call me a wood snob call me what you like but I I just prefer to keep it wood. Now I don't know what happened here, but nonetheless, they le these legs are on the piss. We'll sort that out later. Draw slides. They're my nemesis, to be honest with you. I'm never ever happy with them. Kind of have so little amount of... Uh, Play, let's say, to get them right. I always hate doing anything with draw slides. I've gone with undermount draw slides for a good reason. I don't want to see the uh, mechanism, as it were. Now, just going to make the draw front. I agonise what to do about this. So I wanted to keep, try and keep the project as much as possible OSB, because that's kind of the title of the video. But what can I say? My heartstrings were called on. It needed some some good old O to lift it. So I went with this idea, and this again is a bit of an experiment because I don't know how that's going to work in the sense of wood movement, etc. Let's find out, eh? 
Now this is kind of important that you lay these, let's call them tiles out perfectly to start with because you're going to be reference off, referencing from that one to the next one. And I don't know what went wrong, but I did screw up. But you'll see in a bit. Now, with the limited amount of clamps I've got, this did take some time. Some days later, now I was going to use the MDF as the template to put my guide rail to it to rip them all nice and square. Well, that's the thinking. I'll spare you the sanding because fucking sanding's boring. Now I did hit this with paint and this first coat just shows me any, any imperfections because I want that side to be nice and smooth as a baby's bum. So that paint's going to show me my line or what I need to sand back to, what the damage is that I need to repair as it were. I used Bondo to uh, repair this, you know, to fix it, to make it all nice and smooth. Then Lots of paint, lots of sanding. So here's my screw up. I wonder if you're going to notice it off the bat. It's not particularly obvious, is it? Can I, let me chuck in a shim, see if you notice it now. Oh, God, for fuck's sake. Just in case you didn't notice that, there you go. That's nearly five mil, man, off. So basically, track saw, fix it. In doing so, though, it did change the uh, size of my drawer fronts. I want to put a uh, chamfer on these drawer fronts because I've made these drawer fronts so they protrude from the cabinet about five, six mil. So I think it'd just be a nice little added detail. But my um, plain iron, well, let's just say it looks like someone's opened a tin of paint with it for whatever reason. This is the fastest way I know to put a new edge on a plane. This is just an old strip from a, a, a belt sander. And then just go through the motions. I don't fuck about polishing the hell out of it. There's no point in uh, wasting your time on anything but the business end. The bit that's actually going to be cutting the wood. So once you've uh, got it to shape, really you just need to put the secondary bevel on it and, and polish the bollocks out of that. That's enough. I mean, the whole process probably took... 10 minutes, new edge, secondary bevel, and I take it up to 8,000 on the water stones, and probably 6, 12 strokes, and we're good. I like to use uh, MDF for my strop. Leather, if it's too thick, it can easily round over the edge. Just a bit of compound. I know with MDF it's flat. I don't know how I stand with it. It's, uh, for me, you know, it's always lying about as well. Isn't it? So, hence why I use that. We all love seeing someone shave their arm with a blade, don't we? The best way to check is just shave across the end grain. If you're getting a shaving from it and a nice glass looking finish on the end grain, that's sharp. That is proper sharp. And here's uh, why I need to redo that because that magnet, I often put the plane back too high and it hits. Same old story here. Draw some craft lines and work to them. I don't know how best to explain this, but when you're doing something like this, uh, a chamfer, when you exit the wood, you then rotate your workpiece clockwise 
so the previous chamfer is behind and then shoot your plane from the start of the chamfer, chamfer to the exit where the chamfer isn't and do that on all four sides and you won't have a tear out problem. If you try and do any side you like, you're going to have problems and it'll look a train wreck. Like a ripped out fireplace. Reminds me of an X. Now time to address that uh, elephant in the room. This isn't a train smash like it looks. It's pretty easy to sort out. Use the shims to get the high legs level and then make your marks. Playing cards, they're well handy. Keep them as shims because you don't get shims from the, the builders merchants that thin. You can put your pencil on a block of wood, whatever you like to get the height you want. I knew roughly I only needed to get three mil off because I wanted these nightstands to be about 60 mil from the deck, from the floor upwards. Uh, it's pretty straightforward really. As long as you can cut straight. Man who go to bed with itchy willy, wake up with solution in hand. Sorted. Well, kind of. I've got to make both these cabinets the same height. So I've got to do the same to the other one, even though that one's not rocking around. By three mil. Drawers. They bore the tits off of me making them. So repetitive and boring. Because I'm using such thick stock, which is more what I'd normally use for the drawers. I'm just using what I've got laying around. I'm going to round over the inside of the drawer panels that are closest to the drawer face. It's just going to be a little bit more, more looks a bit nicer. Now I run into some issues here. I was millimetre perfect with these drawers. But they're 19 mil this OSB. So somehow I need to get that to sit over that drawer slide and not touch the drawer slide. As you can see the paint's rubbing off on the screws. It's as tight as a Ganat's chuff. So a quick little shave on the table saw. Mill. Oh, who cares? One mil, two mil, one and a half mil, whatever. And that's for the draw sides. Now this was just for shits and giggles. I just wanted to see what would happen if I run that through a plane and would it blow up or what. And it's quite interesting really. It's kind of, OSB kind of looks like ply if you think about it. It's got big gold strands on the outside and fine little fuckers on the middle. And that's what it's like all the way through. And it has quite a nice little sheen to it, albeit it's not smooth as a baby's bum. So I run some pieces through the planer just to do some testing see how much black I could remove and how much OSB I could leave behind and see what it looked like and here I'm doing some wondering what I should do should I go for pretty much plain a bit of black a bit more black A lot more fucking black. Or did I go with option five? You'll have to wait and see. I'm not taking any chance with these drawer fronts. It's not like normal drawer fronts where you can hand plane the sides 
the width and everything to, to make them fit. Because these have been painted, these have been made to size, so I'm going to use the double sided tape and screw the fuckers on. Why not? Couple of shims, rinse and repeat, job done. Now I went with the reverse here of the paint. The cabinets have pink, then black on top. The drawers got black, then pink on top. I'm quite happy with them. Go on, go on, go on. <laughs> go on.